Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. sensible spirit of Maroxy said he, he was rusty. This is a game in the 1980s. He made the comment in, in, that he was rusty. and He hadn't we, kept up his chess skills. When we did an analysis, we said, okay, maybe he was playing at the high master level. Uh, some would say the grand master level. I mean, Fisher said, mm -hmm. well, this is like a grand master. Yeah. I think it was at the high master level or even at the low master mm -hmm. level. You've got to understand that chess theory has so developed that in order to keep up with chess, you have to keep up with the theory, and it takes a long, long time. Mm -hmm. You can, people are full-time professional chess players. They spend six, eight hours a day training in their chess, studying opening chess theory, studying things. Mm -hmm. And when you prepare for a world championship, like Magnus Carlsen, the current world chess champion, he was lifting weights. He was playing a lot of table tennis. He was getting as fit as anything because it is so stressful and so difficult in terms of physical components. So there's the physical aspect that would go on and there's the absolute preparation such that I, lowly I, at this stage, or when I was playing chess regularly and was keeping up with it, it is possible that I could have beaten the Maroxi of 1905. Mm -hmm. Not because he wasn't much, much better than me, but because chess theory is such that he might have failed because of ideas that change. Now, once you have a minimal advantage in chess, if you're a really good chess player, you can carry through that minimal advantage and you win mm -hmm. as a consequence of it. Even if you're playing against a world chess champion mm -hmm. sometimes, they might be able to get a draw, but they might not mm -hmm. be able to. But of course, they don't give up those minimal advantages. They are too good for that. And of course, in this particular match, Korchnoi did win. Yes. Korknoy did win, and so this put paid to the idea that, well, you know, uh, if this was going to be fabricated, wouldn't have it been nice if Maroxi won? And, you know, it's fascinating when you start looking at how the media talks about it. In fact, mm -hmm. in one of the Bobby Fischer movies, they talked about people who were mad in chess, and they pointed to Fischer, and they pointed to Steinitz, and Wolfgang Steinitz, as far as I remember, uh, way back in the 19th century, announced that he wanted to play God because he said he would beat God <laughs> <laughs> in chess. And uh, so you go backwards in time, and who was quoted? Poor Korchnoi, but they didn't say he played it. He said there was this chess champion grandmaster, one of the leading players in the world, who claimed he played a ghost. And this is ridiculous. And they made a joke about it. Mm -hmm. And when you start looking at it, extended survival over a period of time is quite something. And because of it, you've got to look at all the alternative explanations. <laughs>